on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Bible Vlog. Today we are going to be looking at Acts chapter 9 and we're about to see one of the most amazing conversion experiences in the entire New Testament. We are going to be looking at Saul who later becomes Paul, the writer of most of the New Testament, and he has an experience with God on the road to Damascus, a place that he's going to actually persecute Christians. We're about to read how God turns his world upside down and leads him to no longer persecuting the church but instead preaching Jesus Christ in the temples and synagogues. So starting in verse 1 it says that Saul was breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. So he goes to the high priest and he wants to go to Damascus to find other Christians there that he can drag back to Jerusalem. And he does not care who he's going after. It can be men or women. He wants to find the Christians and put them in prison. Now look at verse 3. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now this is literally God speaking out loud to Saul as he's on his way to persecute the church and other Christians. And we see in verse 5, that Saul is confused by this. He doesn't know what is happening and he says, who are you Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Now that last sentence may not make a lot of sense to us, but what a goad is, is it was a sharp stick that at that time was used to spur on cattle or oxen. What Jesus is saying to Saul in this moment is that it's hard for you to kick against the goads. In other words, your conscience is being pricked. All these terrible things that you have been doing to Christians, you know that it's wrong to do. So in verse 6, we read his response he was trembling and astonished and then said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then Jesus said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Now just so Saul knows that he's not dreaming, he's not making this up, look at verse 7. The men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then it says that when Saul rose from the ground, his eyes were opened, but he could not see anyone. So he is guided by the people that are with him on this journey into Damascus. And for the next three days, Saul is without sight, and he doesn't eat or drink anything. I have no doubt that during this time, Saul is trying to make sense of what happened to him. He's been persecuting the church this entire time, and now Jesus himself speaks to him in this heavenly vision, and now he's dealing with the fact that not only has he been persecuting Christians, he's been persecuting Jesus himself. Now, as Saul is going through this experience over the next three days, it says that the Holy Spirit speaks to a man named Ananias. So look at verse 11. The Lord said to Ananias, Arise and go to a street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is persecuted. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him so that he might receive his sight. Now, immediately after the Lord speaks this to Ananias, he knows exactly who he's talking about. Word about Saul at this point is spread across all of Damascus, and they know that he's persecuting Christians. They know that he oversaw the stoning of Stephen. They know that he's putting people in prison. And then sometimes he's looking to murder people. This is not a guy that you want to be messing with if you are an early church Christian. And yet here the Holy Spirit is directing Ananias to go and pray for Saul. I mean, this would be similar to Jesus speaking to you that there is a terrorist in your town who you know is known for murdering Christians, but Jesus is speaking to you that he's praying and that he needs you to go pray for this man. Now, I don't know about you, but I probably would have been like, <laughs> very funny, God. Oh, Lord, you have a sense of humor. I know you didn't tell me to do that. And Ananias has this kind of response in verse 13. Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. So here Ananias says, Jesus, are you sure? And Jesus responds that, yes, I I have called him. So in verse 17, Ananias went his way, entered the house, and laid his hands on Saul, and said to him, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now again, we see power with the Holy Spirit. As soon as Saul receives the Holy Spirit, in verse 18, it says that immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Now skip ahead just a little bit to verse 20, and look at what immediately starts happening with Saul. He receives his sight, he recognizes that Jesus truly is the Messiah, that he was wrong for persecuting the Christians, and immediately Saul does one of the fastest turnabouts you have ever seen. Look at verse 20. Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. And the people react to this in verse 21. Then all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who called on his name in Jerusalem? Everybody knows who Saul is, and they're shocked out of their minds. He's now talking about Jesus? Is this for real? Is this a trap? It's a trap! I mean, imagine 10 years ago that you went into church on a Sunday morning and all of a sudden the guest speaker that day is Osama bin Laden and he wants to tell you about Jesus. This is what the early church is experiencing with Saul. He's known for killing Christians and here he is saying Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But Saul would not stop preaching. Now we know from Galatians that Saul spent about the next three years in this area preaching and teaching Jesus, proving from the scriptures that he truly was the Messiah. And it got to the point to where the local religious leaders planned a trap where they were going to kill Saul. But it says that the disciples in that area helped Saul get out of the city and that they lowered him down over a wall at night and 
so he made his way back to Jerusalem. So look at verse 26. When Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was truly a disciple. But Barnabas, who we later read about journeys with Paul on many of his missionary journeys, took him to the apostles and declared to them that he had seen the Lord on the road and that Jesus had spoken to him and how he preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So at this point, Saul himself joins the apostles and he starts preaching in Jerusalem. But again, just like Damascus, Saul is so adamant that Jesus is the Christ. He is preaching so boldly and without fear that again, local religious leaders attempt to kill him. And so the apostles have to help move Saul out of this area to another region so that he can continue preaching Jesus. Listen, no matter what people try to do to stop the message of Jesus Christ, it wouldn't work. Every time that Satan tried to raise up a person to persecute the church, God would literally turn it around, in this case, by literally appearing to Saul and informing him that I truly am the Messiah. You know, one of the things that strikes me about Saul is this. He was willing to admit when he was wrong. You know, I have no doubt that Saul originally thought that he was doing God's work by trying to stop the spread of Christianity. He thought he was keeping the law. He thought he was keeping the prophets. He was very devout in what he believed. And when Jesus confronted him about it, he admitted that he was wrong and he turned his ways around immediately. Guys, that is going to be it for us today. Thank you as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Bible this week. Listen, just like always, we are going to be picking it up on Monday with chapter 10. I hope you all have a very, very beautiful weekend and thank you as always for joining us. We will see you back here first thing on Monday morning for Acts chapter 10. We'll see you guys.